Isn't it amazing? A tabloid newspaper runs a story, calls it Climate Gate 2, and the blogosphere lights up. According to the Mail, a retired scientist who worked for the NCEI, the National Centers for Environmental Information, said NOAA breached protocol by fast-forwarding a flawed scientific paper that artificially raised temperatures and artificially erased the so-called pause in global warming. And without bothering to check the accuracy of the story, which comes from a newspaper famous for reporting a 50-foot crab off the coast of Whitstable, and a reporter with a history of making up spurious stories about climate science, bloggers and politicians announced it was all true. I thank Dr John Bates for courageously stepping forward to tell the truth about NOAA's senior officials playing fast and loose with the data in order to meet a politically predetermined conclusion. This endorsement came not from a blogger, but from senior members of the House Committee on Science, Space and Technology in Congress, within hours of publication and without even the need to check the story. So let's check it for them. There are two issues here. One is whether NOAA fast-forwarded publication to get the paper published in time for the Paris climate meeting. That may be best answered by the publisher itself, Science, whose editor sent a copy of his email exchange with the Mail's reporter to Ros Pidcock. According to Science, the NOAA paper by Tom Carl et al., took six months to thoroughly peer review, two months longer than normal, and all of the data were publicly available prior to publication. That sheds a bit more light on whether the paper was fast-forwarded, but none of this information was in the mail story. Of course, that doesn't mean protocols weren't breached, and that's a serious question, and one that needs to be properly investigated. The other issue is whether the paper was flawed, and that's much easier to determine. The Carl paper explained that the so-called pause in global warming was probably the result of erroneous ocean temperature measurements. The pause refers to a slowdown at the beginning of this century in the rate of warming of the atmosphere, where about 8% of global warming is going. 90% is going into the oceans. To put it simply, the trend line appears to go up more steeply in the 90s than in the noughties. So a lot of studies have been done by lots of different scientific institutions to try to find out why the atmospheric trend line changed, and it turns out to be most likely a combination of factors. Lower solar output, increasing aerosol pollution, and the transfer of extra heat into the oceans all play a part. And it was this transfer of heat into the oceans that NOAA was mostly concerned with, because that would show up in higher sea surface temperatures. In the old days, this temperature reading was always taken on ships. Then a system of buoys was set up to take these measurements. But researchers noticed a problem. The measurements from the ships was recording slightly higher temperatures than the buoys, because the intake of seawater was near the hot engine room. And as the number of readings from buoys increased, that difference, called a bias, was influencing the trend line. So, crudely put, it goes like this. Temperature reading from a ship, temperature reading from a ship, temperature reading from a ship. Then we switch to a temperature reading from a buoy, and another reading from a buoy. Now, obviously, the ocean hasn't suddenly cooled, but if you publish this as a temperature graph, then it's going to look as though it has. So the data has to be adjusted. This is what caused consternation in the blogosphere, because those who don't understand the difference between temperature anomalies and trend lines thought Noah was deliberately trying to push up temperatures. But according to the Mail, this newspaper has learnt that Noah has now decided that the sea data set will have to be replaced and substantially revised just 18 months after it was issued, because it used unreliable methods which overstated the speed of warming. Well, the Mail may have just found out about it, but it wasn't a surprise to everybody else. The 2015 results were part of an ongoing series of studies under a program called Extended Reconstruction Sea Surface Temperature, or EIRST for short. The 2015 results were called EIRST-4, updating the previously much less accurate EIRST-3b. And when EIRST-5 comes out, that's the new data set the Mail is referring to, it'll be more accurate still. A preliminary report suggests it'll bring the trend down about 10% from EIRST-4, but it'll still be about 50% up from EIRST-3b. So, contrary to the Mail's claim, EIRST-5 isn't being published because EIRST-4 used unreliable methods or overstated the speed of warming. It'll be published because it's part of a continuous process of updating and increasing the accuracy of data. 
Science rarely has eureka moments. It just gets more and more accurate as more and better measurements are taken. Erst 5 will itself be replaced by Erst 6. So the updating of information is not evidence that the data set was flawed, let alone fraudulently manipulated. Perhaps the most damning evidence for that is this quote in the mail story, supposedly from John Bates. He said, They had good data from buoys, and they threw it out and corrected it by using the bad data from ships. You never change good data to agree with bad, but that's what they did. It's a line that's been repeated by bloggers, newspapers and TV networks that regularly run stories trying to undermine climate science. But did Bates really say that? David Rose has been accused of making up quotes by someone he interviewed before, and if he follows past practice, he'll refuse to release his notes or recordings of the Bates interview for verification. But fortunately, we can check what Bates actually did say on the subject elsewhere without having David Rose act as our rather questionable interpreter. In his own words, on a climate blog run by Judith Curry, Bates explains the problem he has with the Carl paper and the archiving of the Earth's Ford dataset. This was posted just before the Mail published its story, and the contrast is revealing. The link to this is in my video description, so take the time to read it. You'll see why the Mail chose to embellish Bates's actual complaints, because his actual complaints would have put their readers to sleep and not cause much of a stir. So what does Bates have to say about they had good data from buoys and they threw it out? Funnily enough, absolutely nothing. His only mention of the procedure is here, and it's purely factual. For ocean temperatures, the Earth's version 4 is used in the K15 paper, that's the Carl paper, and represents a major update from the previous version. The bias correction procedure was changed, and this resulted in different SST anomalies and different trends during the last 15 plus years relative to Earth's version 3. Which, of course, is all true, and he certainly doesn't suggest good data from buoys was thrown out. And since the mail story was published, Bates has reportedly told Climate Wire that he's not suggesting any malfeasance. The issue here is not an issue of tampering with data, but rather really of timing of a release of a paper that had not properly disclosed everything it was, he said. And he told Associated Press the same thing. It's really a story of not disclosing what you did, Bates said in the interview. It's not trumped up data in any way, shape or form. But whether Bates said Noah was throwing out good data or Rose did, it's complete nonsense anyway. Noah didn't throw out the good data from buoys at all. They did completely the opposite. Instead of relying mostly on ship data, Erst 4 researchers overwhelmingly favoured data from buoys, as is explained in all the published research. And if the reference to changing good data is a reference to adjusting the temperature data to take account of the difference between ships and buoys then it's absurd to claim that this is throwing out good data. No one in climate research disagrees with the decision to eliminate the bias, not even Bates. If it hadn't been done, the record would be showing a spurious temperature drop, which I'm sure is what David Rose would like to see, but it doesn't match reality. Whatever objections Rose has to the way it was done, the way it was done turned out to be right. A January 2017 paper by Zeke Hausfather et al. confirmed the validity of the NOAA adjustments and concluded that they agreed with what other scientific institutions had found, including Berkeley Earth, the Hadley Centre in the UK and the Japan Meteorological Agency. All get the same results as NOAA. Rose tried to substantiate his claims with a graph, which purports to show that NOAA is fraudulently raising temperatures, in fact, all it shows is that the mail doesn't understand temperature reconstructions. They're not showing global temperatures, they're showing global temperature anomalies. Different institutions use different baselines. That makes no difference to absolute temperatures or temperature trends. These graphs show the variance of those temperatures from different averages in the past. Hadley uses the baseline 1961 to 1990, while Noah uses the baseline 1901 to 2000. Putting these together without adjusting the baseline is like putting two graphs together, one measuring Fahrenheit and the other measuring centigrade, and claiming that the Fahrenheit graph shows more warming. The mail also claims in the caption that the graph reveals that NOAA has been adjusted to show a steeper warming trend. 
But of course it does nothing of the sort. All it reveals is that the male doesn't understand how to put two graphs on the same baseline, so that we can compare them and see what the trend is. Fortunately for us, Housefather has done just that. And guess what? The trend is exactly the same. Why didn't the male put the two graphs on the same baseline? Because if they had, they would have proved that the NOAA data set agrees perfectly with verified data from Hadley, and that's not the conclusion their readers want to hear. Taken together with the land data, the NOAA trend again shows no slowdown in global warming, not just from NOAA, but from other scientific institutions as well, like Berkeley Earth, NASA and Counten and Way. They all show no global warming pause. There are a lot more errors in the mail story, and if I was doing my usual month-long investigation, I'd go in-depth and pick it apart in more detail. But at least I've done some checking, which is more than can be said for the bloggers and the politicians who immediately proclaimed the story true. So I'm not saying accusations by tabloid newspapers should be dismissed, but they should at least be checked, especially those with a history of getting their facts wrong. What's really shocking is that the House Committee on Science, Space and Technology, which oversees science on behalf of the most powerful country in the world, is happy to blindly believe a tabloid newspaper that says Noah got it wrong, rather than peer-reviewed scientific papers that verified Noah's conclusions and scientific institutions around the world that got exactly the same results. Maybe the House Committee on Science, Space and Technology's next job should be to prepare defences against Crabzilla, It must be true. It's in the mail.